Hey, Grace Quotes, hope you're having a great day. Pastor Randy here. Today's video quote comes from John Gerstner. He said this, We must either worship Christ as God or despise or pity him as man. Let me read that again. We must either worship Christ as God or despise or pity him as man. One of the biggest complaints against our faith is the concern that other people have when we claim that our religion in Christianity is greater than all the other religions in the world, or uh, that our religious figure, as in Jesus Christ, is superior to all the world religious figures. To them in this world, that is considered the epitome of arrogance. So how do we know that? Um, why do we believe those things? Well, number one, we simply understand that only Jesus Christ rose from the dead. All the other world religious figures are still buried in the ground. Number two, we also realize that only Jesus Christ paid the penalty for sin. Every other world religious figure might have been a good teacher or philosopher in some kind of a sense, but no one else paid the penalty for sin. And number three, as the Gerstner quote just articulated, we also claim, unlike every other world religion, that our religious figure in Jesus Christ is God himself. That when Jesus Christ came to earth, he took on flesh, but he retained the fullness of his deity, that Jesus is God. Now, how can we come up with a claim like that? Well, we support all of our claims with scripture. So consider this list that I, I just came up with. Number one, we know that Jesus is God based on what the scripture teaches because he is called God. Number two, because he claimed himself to be God. Number three, he separates himself from all mankind. Number four, his contemporaries, at least many of them, understood him this way. That's why, for instance, the Jews tried to kill him for blasphemy. Number five, he had an eternal preexistence. Number six, there are Old Testament passages that are used of God and God alone, but now in the New Testament, used of Jesus Christ. Also, there are Old Testament titles that are used of God and God alone in the Old Testament. Now in the New Testament, used of Jesus Christ. Number seven, he received worship. Number eight, he is placed on par with the Father. I and the Father are one. Number nine, he performed divine actions. We call those miracles. And number 10, he possessed divine attributes. If you want more of this study, I uh, compiled this list in the uh, description box below, uh, along with hundreds of verses uh, to support these claims. So Krishna, I encourage you, take some time. Uh, look up these verses, check them out. Be confident that the Savior you worship is God, that Jesus Christ is God, retaining all of his deity, but yet retaining now, taking on the fullness of humanity to represent us as humans, to go to the cross and die for sin, but to be God himself and always God, to pay that eternal debt that we owed at such an infinite price that only he could pay by qualifying himself, by living the sinless life that only God can do to be this perfect, sacrificial, substitute Lamb of God to pay the penalty for our sins. So be encouraged, again, that your Savior is God. And when you get to church and you're worshiping, and you're worshiping throughout the week, that we worship Jesus Christ because we believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God who eternally exists in three persons. God bless you. Thanks again for watching.